what's good my people today we've got a jenny documentary but this video's name is called jenny the villain of k-pop now i just reacted to lalisa as well as rosie's documentary but when i came to jenny a lot of you said nah i should react to jenny the villain of, villain of k-pop it's also a documentary going about like jenny so i should check this one out so i hope this is the right one you feel me but anyways let's update this video now i know i told you guys i'm only gonna record videos after my studies but like bro i needed a break you feel me like studying like, tomorrow's accounting i just need a little bit of a break and i'm gonna, I'm gonna get some black pink content in jenny the villain of k-pop next is jisoo you guys let me know which video on jisoo i should react to it's gonna come up and then after jisoo's documentary we got the, the, the Blackpink house episodes. We've got the 24-7, 365 videos. We've got all those documentaries and live uh, videos rolling in, as well as the music videos. Always going to come with my homie. Don't even stress about that. But let's get straight into Jenny, the, Jenny, the villain of K-pop. Now, this is my friend's bias. I know you guys wanted him on this video, but bro, it's so hard. End of the year, everything is like coming to an end. Everything is starting, ending, starting, ending. It's like very hard to get to each other, but please don't worry. We're going to get to each other Previously again soon. on Avatar. Huh? Avatar? A disclaimer. I do not have all the facts. I'm sure Blinks themselves and Jenny fans have much more information than I do, so I defer to their greater wisdom in this case. As someone who's neither a Blink nor a Jenny fan, huh? I've also tried to keep to the basics with this video. In the pursuit of transparency, I believe it's important that- Wait, 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 I should have read there, what the- ...than that? I do, so I defer to their greater wisdom in this case. As someone who's neither a Blink nor a Jenny fan, I've also tried to keep to the basics with this video. In the pursuit- Why does she mean she's not a Blink, like? Did she make a documentary based off of, like- outside commentary you know like she's not a biased blink solo stand she's not uh being um corrupt you know corrupt like with the with the facts bit of transparency i believe it's important that you know that i have criticized yg entertainment in the past and i still stand by those beliefs i still have issues mm -hmm. with yg as a company but i think it's important for you to understand that my research on jenny is separate from my opinions about yg Jenny okay. is a person. Yeah. Even if you don't really like her, I need to hammer home that she is a person. Please keep that in mind. Yeah. Huh. I like this music video. What was it called? Jenny Solo. I'm going solo, lo, 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 lo. Fire, fire track. Jenny Kim is a K-pop idol in the girl group Blackpink. Yes. She and her group are extremely well known both in South Korea and around the world. Jenny is undeniably Blackpink's it girl. She's the de facto center, and regardless of who's the most popular domestically or internationally, Jenny is the real face of Blackpink. She achieved superstar status practically from debut, and has been in the eyes of the public ever since. Okay. Jenny is also a very polarizing figure in both the fan base and the industry at large. She may be, arguably, the most polarizing female idol of the generation. She's cultivated a reputation for being obsessively loved and obsessively hated. Jenny has been involved in numerous quote-unquote scandals, and of course, what people consider scandals differs wildly. I fell for one. <laughs> I'll, I'll own up to that. My apologies. I read this comment about G-Dragon and I believed it. My bad. <laughs> My bad. That's just a, a beginner blink, you feel me? My bad. That was a whole fake news about them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. However, it's the simplest term, even if misused to the point of detachment. Dating, stage presence, attitude, personality, all things Jenny has been tagged for, for various reasons, with varying levels of outrage and rationality. Privileged, spoiled, and princess are all words that have been stuck to her over the years. Hmm? There's a sort of mythology surrounding Jenny, a narrative within the fandom that she is the quote-unquote favored member of Blackpink, and that she, whether unintentionally or not, takes advantage of this favoritism to cut corners as an idol and as a member of Blackpink. This mythology eventually adopted the word lazy and has run rampant with it ever since. She's been drafted into a role in the K-pop narrative that const- Yo, did they just call Jenny lazy, bro? Are there people in the world that think Jenny is lazy? Now, that's crazy. Now, those people telling me uh, Jenny is lazy, bro. How, how come you don't go train for six years as a trainee at a big label company? You know, face off against other girls. Why don't you go do that and then see if you're still lazy, you know? Constantly attracts lazy. negative attention. And I'd go so far as to say she's currently the number one targeted K-pop idol for hate and slander. In the uh. current generation, Jenny has basically become the evil supervillain of K-pop. Today, I wanted to crack down on why the fandom chose Jenny to be the center of so much hate in the K-pop mythos. 2010. Jenny joined YG in 2010. She was 14, not yet out of middle school if she were an American student. 
Entering any workforce at 14 is undeniably terrifying, and a workforce as competitive and dehumanizing as this one is definitely a life-impacting moment. Yeah. A lot of people would argue that that's way too young to start becoming an idol, but companies allow this to have the cream of the crop trainees by the time they're young adults, Thanks. if they even wait that long to debut them. To be fair, bro, think about sports stars, you know, when you go into high school or senior year, junior year, I mean, sophomore year. I mean, they prep you as well for the big games. Like, let's say you play for a very uh, up, up, like up in the leaderboard uh, high schools that you're basically prepping for, let's say, the NFL or the NBA, you know, like it's not it's not new to be like even if it's k-pop idol or entertainment or music it's like it's almost seen everywhere in sports you know nonetheless jenny was a child when she entered the scene while jenny didn't debut until she was 20 she's been involved in the industry and the idol system since she was 14 years old and remember this is yg entertainment's training system which is notorious for its insane physical and emotional pressure the K-pop industry is no stranger to human rights violations and there's no real way to know exactly what happened during her formative years Jenny described the trainee experience as, quote, really mean, going so far as to say it was, quote, a cold-hearted world. Oh, but it's a ring on the world. My daughter, Mare, Boden, YG, producer, and Hakum, and artist, and Sanangimi, and Yasa, 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 중간 평가해야 될지 월 매주 찍는 일주일에 한 번씩 찍는 보컬 영상도 찍어야 될지 팝핀 영상 찍어야 될지 크럼프 영상 찍어야 될지 할게 너무 많았어요 매달 그때는 뭐 하는 입장이어서 힘들었는지 잘 몰랐어요 그냥 해야 돼그 있잖아요 학교 다닐 때 2012 In April of 2012 YG Entertainment uploaded a photo of Jenny to their official blog without her name she instantly drew attention with people sharing and discussing the photo all over the internet. She was labeled the mystery girl of YG. People eventually uncovered her real name and rumors began to fly that she would be a member of YG's upcoming new girl group. Jenny was the first member to ever be announced for Blackpink before the group name was even confirmed. Apparently- So she joined on 14, two years later they posted this photo of her. She was 16 years old and then they said she's going to be in the new group confirmed. I don't know if this is a true story. Maybe it is. Maybe I don't know. I don't Jenny know. was the first member to ever be announced for Blackpink before the group name this. was even confirmed. Apparently, yeah. Jenny was supposed to debut in a girl group that year, but that was postponed to 2013 and again even later. There's something of a black hole in the timeline right here. The shape of this projected girl group changed rapidly, going from 10 members to 5, from 5 to 4, Debut would get closer and closer and then disappear, leaving the trainees involved either benched or inactive. August 8th, 2016. Finally, Blackpink as we know them debuted. They were YG's Aya. first girl group Aya. in nearly six years. Their debut was a blockbuster smash, and they shot to stardom almost instantly. Things were actually pretty great for the first two years. Yeah. Blackpink released three songs in 2016 and one in 2017. The members promoted their songs on various music shows, at award ceremonies, all over television and the internet. Their popularity was immense and immediate, and so were the problems. Sometime around late 2016, the phrase YG's princess first appeared in reference to Jenny, but between 2017 and 2018, that's when the title became stapled to her narrative. Many fans and non-fans alike saw Jenny as receiving special attention and favoritism from the company. There were different reasons with varying levels of truth and perspective, including but not limited to, Jenny is given the best or at least highest quality performance clothes. Bro, what? Yo, some people really do be crazy in this world, like... What are you talking about, bro? Jenny yeah. is styled to make her stand out from the rest of the group. Jenny is the most promoted member of Blackpink, receiving the most sponsorships, or at least the most important ones, be they modeling, advertisement, brand deals, whatever. These arguments began rising with fury in the middle of 2017, and while it seems a bit early for a group to attract so much conspiracy just a year after debut, there's a very definitive reason why so much speculation exploded in 2017. 2017 Right as the fandom and industry at large were at its hungriest for content from Blackpink, YG decided they hate money and put the group on a year-long hiatus. That's a year-long hiatus from a group who were, at that point, basically rookies. 
bro, this is mad to me. Like, now that she's saying all these facts to me, now I'm clocking. Like, I remember we reacted to a lot of the tracks from 2016. You guys said there's an album we need to react to. We're going to react to the album, but there's only one album. From 2016 till 2021, there's only one album with a lot of singles. That's Apart weird. from advertising and the occasional live performance, the group practically vanished. They did release one song, As If It's Your Last, in the earlier half of the year, Hi, and boy uh... did it seem like it was our last. The fans were stranded high and dry, and to say this caused frustration is an understatement. YG Entertainment had built unbelievable hype for Blackpink, and then gave the fan base a big ol' middle finger and a cordial f*** This edits are funny, bro. Big shout out to this channel. Bruh. You! Confused, aggravated, and rightfully angry, fans and non-fans began digging into anything Blackpink that they could. To be fair, a lot of you in the comments even told me this, like, Blackpink is like waiting for the next comeback and they like, they want to make music. I saw the light up the sky, bro. The part 124. They're like, we have so much music we want to put out, but it's not time yet. Like, they can't say... They're holding it back, you know? Why would you do that? That makes no sense to me. Like, Blackpink obviously is pulling views, pulling money, pulling fans, pulling, like, crazy influence, and then you're holding them back. Like, what are you doing? This MR thing? removed videos, choreo comparisons, fan theories, plots to storm YG, anything and anything they could to keep Blackpink alive in their minds. Eventually, all things Blackpink became connected to this underlying frustration, and that frustration never fully washed out. As the hiatus stretched, so did the tensions. This is where Bruh. she began to hit the fan. During a few live performances, Jenny forgot some of the lyrics to their songs. Given industry standards for perfection, Jenny's previous dedication to precision, and the overall fandom frustration, it turned into something of a deal. People called her unprofessional, a mess, a whole host of other names. While claims of favoritism and spoiled behavior had existed since her debut, new fuel was suddenly added to the fire and everything Jenny did was labeled as a product of a spoiled princess getting away with absolutely anything she wanted. Jenny's public persona as an idol is one that relies on being an untouchable badass who doesn't give a f Bruh. So add that to the princess claims and you've got yourself a pretty unlikable reputation. Again, emphasis on reputation. This is how people saw Jenny, not necessarily who she really was. To allay discontent in the fanbase, the best thing to do would be to release a comeback before the year was out. Negative attention, positive attention, Blackpink was getting both, and YG was in perfect position to capitalize on it, as long as they could keep out of trouble for 10 seconds or so. Mix 9 is that another game? Um, is YG the label who robbed Blackpink from a lot of money and then the, 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 the guy went off gambling? I think I heard something about that. You guys let me know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who Young's agency files damage suit from YG in response? 4 billion won. Huh? YG's contest project Mix 9 went Mount Vesuvius and exploded in great flaming chunks of Bruh. After scheduling the winning group for debut, YG cancelled the entire thing and their finances collapsed. The company's revenue dropped by over 30% and they lost over $9 million. The failure of the show was so great that JYP replaced YG as the second highest earning company and agencies cut ties with YG left and right. 2018. In May of 2018, Psy finally chose to value self-love and left YG for good. 2017 ended with... Oh, so that uh, was also in YG. I never knew that. No news about a return of Blackpink. <laughs> Well, they reissued their original Japanese debut, so yay for that, I guess, but that was about it. For months, all that came out of them was the occasional live performance or interview show. The frustration boiled over into an all-out fan war. The words overhyped and overrated were appearing left and right. Many people were angry that YG Entertainment was benching such a popular group. Other people were angry that a group with so little content was even popular to begin with. And even more people were angry that others were angry at everyone else for being angry. That's everyone was mad at play. everybody for absolutely everything all the time. And where on earth was Blackpink? <laughs> Oh, there they are. Finally, after 10,000 years, Blackpink had a comeback. Square Up was a major success, and its flagship track, Da 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 Da, was a commercial explosion. 
finally fans were getting content again. Except this time things felt a little different. Right off the bat, people began commenting on Jenny's presence, noting a lack of expression, enthusiasm, and overall energy in both the music video and on stage. As the promotions for Dida Dida ran on, it only got worse. More and more videos and fan cams began surfacing of Jenny's dancing during the era. And while music shows seemed average, concert footage did not. In September, YG announced Blackpink's first ever concert in Seoul. Controversy or not, people were ecstatic at the idea of seeing Blackpink perform live at their own concert. And from there, Bruh. really hit the fan. Footage from the concert showed Jenny not participating in large amounts of choreography and making other mistakes on stage. Paired with the footage of numerous other performances that year, Jenny's dancing appeared to have greatly diminished. But with the maintained success of Blackpink throughout the hiatus, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? Oh my god, it was a disaster. This video no longer exists, but I think we all remember the big lazy dancing video comparing her dancing of previous years to this one. Something was totally wrong. Regardless of anyone's opinion on Jenny, this is objectively a problem. People paid money to see this concert, and so, from a consumer standpoint, this is inexcusable. And not just the Soul concert, but others as well. Yo, this video is actually giving me so much information. From a fan standpoint, I imagine it's ridiculously disappointing. Add that to the fact that YG was obsessively striking down any video criticizing or even discussing Jenny, and you got yourself a right Bruh. form. No one had any idea what was going on with Jenny, and to this day we have no definitive answer as to what caused the quote-unquote lazy scandal. But the bashing was loud, harsh, and unrelenting. Many people called her lazy, spoiled, a brat, a danger to Blackpink, an insult to her members, a brat, and everything but the kitchen sink. Objectively, Jenny's performances were not fair to the fans who had waited and paid money to see the group perform. There's no denying or getting around that. It's simply unacceptable and needed to be amended right away. But with that same objectivity, anyone can see that the backlash Jenny received wasn't going to win any morality awards. Yeah. Fans and non-fans had decided that Jenny had forfeited the right to any human decency and began hacking away at her for any reason whatsoever. I feel so bad for Rose, G, Sue, and Lisa. They look like Jenny's backup dancers. LMAO Papa YG can't take it when someone criticizes his precious princess. So YG is deleting evidence I see. Doesn't change the fact that Jenny has been incredibly lazy since 2017. She's so hype when it's her part but being lazy when other parts come. Agree. She's lazy. Feel bad for people who actually spent money to see this half-hearted performance. Don't get what she's so lazy for. She doesn't even care for the fans who paid tons of money to attend a concert. The fact that she got different clothes and stuff doesn't change that she is a lazy ass. Sorry, hun. Come on, stop defending. It's obvious. Hello, princess. Wake up. You're on stage. Each person paid $100 to watch you. Obviously, her six years of training have really served her nothing. Jenny perfectly knows that she is YG's favorite and knows how to take advantage of it. Shame on her. Is she dancing or just walking on stage? The problem was, there was genuine constructive criticism emerging at the time. But with so much hate flying around, actual criticism was either buried at the bottom or excused by overly protective fans who were labeling everything as hate and saying to hell with the whole thing. Something worth stressing. Most people are rational. The vast majority of K-pop fans weren't typing away on their keyboards slamming Jenny or compulsively defending her. The problem is that the less calm people often yell louder. And considering the fact that the international Bad. fandom is majorly internet-based, boom. Total chaos. Yeah. Rumors began flying. Defensive fans scrambled left and right to come up with any sort of justification for Jenny's performance. Some people called back to her injury from three months back where she strained her ankle dancing, despite confirmations before the concert that she was healed. Others began theorizing about problems in her personal life. The word depression surfaced and people ran miles with it. Internet Internet? Internet? I'm not Jenny's therapist, you're not Jenny's therapist. While being aware of mental health is really important, more often than not, Fandoms will use it as a shield for certain situations, and then completely abandon it the second it no longer suits them. For example, Blinks showed up in droves to preach the importance of mental health during Jenny's quote-unquote lazy scandal, and then went completely silent when abuse victims criticized Blackpink's bruised photo cards, calling it not a big deal. Again, a small percentage, but it goes to show that fandoms are fickle. 
On top of that, Jenny's mental health is her personal privacy. Diagnosing others with mental illness is extremely messed up for a lot of reasons. True. It's disrespectful to people with depression and the people you're diagnosing whose life and health you don't really know about. I truly believe many fans just wanted to protect Jenny and help her and show her support, but diagnosing others is a slippery slope, and it can be dangerous to her career or even her own image of herself. Needless to say, this would have been a great time for the company to step in and respond to growing tensions. Wh Yo, I feel like YG, the, the stuff I'm hearing from YG at least, like YG low-key not doing their job well, you feel me? Like YG, I don't know how they are such a big label at least if they're doing this type of stuff you know but i don't know this is only the information i gather i don't really have both sides of the stories i guess you know but like yg so far doesn't have a good reputation in my eyes you know yg entertainment needed to handle this with tact and settle the mess with as little controversy as possible instead they did this <laughs> No ways, bro. This track was fire, but no ways they 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 made this song after all this, and then they're like, boom, you're hitting on Jenny, Jenny dropping a solo track. Yo, that's so like risky, bro. In 2018, Jenny had her solo debut. Her song, Solo, quickly became one of the most controversial releases of the year. It seemed that all that talk about favoritism was actually being confirmed. YG did say the other girls would get solos, but as of the making of this video, none of them have been released or even discussed. Okay, yeah, Lisa has a solo and Rosie has solos. I don't know if Jisoo has solos yet. I know you guys said something about clarity, but Jisoo doesn't have the, her own music video, does she? Jisoo. I know Rosie, I reacted to two of hers, Gone and On the Floor. On the ground, I said it again. I said it wrong again. Oh my days, Rosie, gone and on the uh, and on the ground. Oh my days, I can't believe I said on the floor again. And and then Lalisa obviously has her tracks that I reacted to as so. well. And here's where it gets worse. Jenny's dancing during performances of her solo song were some of her best performances of the year, causing people to attack her once again for allegedly favoring her own solo. Maybe people said that she's sick or tired, but why when she's performing solo, she's energetic for me. Real Blackpink members are Jisoo, Rose, and Lisa. Why is she the only one with a solo song? The other girls worked hard too. Weirdo YG gonna be angry now. His spoiled princess is exposed again. I feel bad for people who paid to see Jenny. Has going solo made her stuck up as well? After all that, there was no full group comeback for the rest of the year, and Jenny continued to promote solo all the way through the end of 2018. And if you thought the year would end peacefully, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> people were bashing her for the way she sat at award shows, for her face during other performances, for the way she walked down aisles, for picking up a blanket. The woman couldn't breathe without violating some sort of oxygen quota. The only good thing that came out of all this mess was this iconic performance of Solo. Yo, those guys are lucky though. And that was the disaster that was 2018. 2019. This brings me to one of the genuine villains of K-pop, Dispatch. On the first Bruh. day of 2019, Dispatch, a scandal-breaking network, revealed that Jenny and EXO member Kai were dating. Listen, you son of a- Bruh. What the f*** is your problem? You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a- Bruh. You piece of- Bruh. You Bruh. goddamn f***. Listen, f***. You oh, lost the, line. Oh. the photo showed up everywhere, oh. and eventually Kai's company, SM Entertainment, confirmed that the two were dating. YG, on the other hand, had trouble discerning romantic partners and Uber drivers. Bless their hearts, they have no idea how to handle anything, do they? People began to badmouth Jenny on principle, saying that she was breaking her contractual dating ban and YG was letting her get away with it. This is sort of misleading, as YG's dating ban holds effect only until you debut as an idol. Uh, Jenny was perfectly within her rights to date freely, but remember, the K-pop industry thrives on idols appearing available, and secret dating between idols can reflect badly on reputations. It was especially controversial for Jenny to be dating another idol when the memory of Hyuna and Edon was still fresh. Of course, Jenny's not responsible in any way for Cube or the industry's messed up standards, but she got flack for it anyway. As soon as it all started, the relationship was over. Kai and Jenny broke up at the beginning of 2019 for reasons we'll probably never know but can damn well guess at. Once again, Blackpink was on hiatus and people were pissed. And that's the basics of it. 
after looking at all i think it must be nice to be a k-pop out on everything but like bro hearing this bro there's so many you know media the media can like blow your life apart all of this blackpink in general has a frustrating mythos they only have 13 songs no full album and often disappear for long periods of time music wise blackpink has never truly stopped being rookies jenny being the primary face of blackpink often centers these feelings of frustration on her people see jenny with her badass persona her colder faces and her rougher patches in her career and all that frustration can come smashing down in full force because because Blackpink doesn't have enough content for people to feast on, they've created their own fan version of the K-pop world where Jennie is some evil person to be destroyed. They made her into a Bond villain who wanted to leave the group and destroy the other members' success and not give a shit about fans because it was more fun to have someone to target than to face the fact that YG Entertainment is ultimately a faceless company that can't be attacked. People couldn't bully YG- YG is a faceless so they don't know who the CEO is, I guess. G into giving them music, but they sure as hell could take out their anger on Jenny. Fandoms need villains. They strive on having people to uphold like gods and people to tear down as scum. Jenny was in the perfect position to become the latter. So there it is. It's a mixed bag with no real binary answer. Jenny dropped the ball during her 2018 performances, that's true. But fans bullied her for months, on end, YG Entertainment gave her a solo they knew would stir up controversy at the end of her reputation, and Dispatch subjected her relationship to the public. And now, you are all caught up. So, where's Jenny now? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Fans remarked that her stage presence came back in a big way during the Kill This Love era, bringing back that power she's known for. Not only have her domestic performances improved, but her traveling ones as well. I couldn't give two sh Bruh. Coachella, but if you listen to Jenny speak at the concert, you could hear just how much she loved being there, and you could see just how much hard work she'd put into it. Many people genuinely forget how loved Jenny is by the other members of Blackpink. The way Jisoo, Rose, and True. Lisa talk about her and interact with her speaks volumes about what she's like behind the scenes. True. Like everything I heard in the start of this video, like people saying Jenny's this, Jenny's that, Jenny's lazy, Jenny's like bad, she only cares about herself. If that was true, bro, the other members wouldn't have been so positive and nice to Jenny, you feel me? But the other l members literally love Jenny. I've seen this in so many videos before. So. They love her, truly. And not just them, but other idols as well, like Irene and Nyan. I'll leave this off by saying that I admire Jenny for coming through the other side. And I hope this yeah. villain narrative is finally buried in the dirt. I also hope that the people who felt hatred towards Jenny find peace in the upcoming year where they feel better and don't need to say cruel things about others online. Yeah. I hope that Blinks get the comebacks they want and we can all just take a break and enjoy things that we enjoy. And that's the video. Thanks for watching, good luck to Jenny, and I'll talk- a Amazing video. I'm a subscriber and like, I'll also leave the link to this video in the description below. I saw something about the comment, yeah, he has a pinned comment that is uh, update. So at this point, I think we all know what went down. YGE exploited Jenny's injuries, personal life and reputation against her well-being for media gain and money. And she came through it basically on her own sheer metal. Metal, 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 metal. I don't know how to say that word. Rashid subtitles were uploaded by a community member. Thank you for contributing if you send me a name. So the Spanish house was created by OKRC. It's just the everything. The Uber statement was falsified and the tweet was fan made. My apologies. As disclaimer at the beginning, this video is essay, not a textbook. It's based on my own speculation explanation to the subject. And there's more than one perspective. Facts. Big shout out to everything, bro. That, that's been the video called Jenny, the villain of K-pop. So much information I never really knew. And I, as I keep continuing reacting to Blackpink and like all this stuff, I'm going to realize more stuff. Now, bro, hearing she said Blackpink only has 13 tracks. I never knew that that little, you know. I really didn't know. But let me know in the comment section below what I should react to next with my homie as well. Which music videos, which live performances. Coachella was highly performed. Tokyo Dome highly uh, uh, requested as well, you know, so you guys let me know. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. That's only if you enjoy my content, which is all for free. That's been your boy, Jenny, the villain of K-pop. I'm out. Safe.